Giuliani with America's Mayor Live from Palm Beach, Florida. One mile from Mar-a-Lago in the free state of Florida with a governor who is not a dictator to be distinguished from some of the Democratic states like New York and California, particularly the city of New York, which has now become, well, you couldn't really tell the difference if you were a Republican, if you were living in East Berlin during the communist era or in New York today, because well, they can take your property away, they can take your law license away, they can put you in jail for things that aren't crimes that nobody else gets put in jail for. Uh, they can intimidate your employer to fire you. Um, I don't know. Z uh, and Putin doing much worse than that, probably a little bit worse. Kind of on the way there, right? So uh, we had a real, real tragedy in New York uh, yesterday. And uh, I know we covered it a bit yesterday, but we didn't have all the details yesterday. And this one, I have to tell you, um, they all hit me very, very hard. I remember the first police officer that died in the line of duty when I was mayor. He was buried in the church that I was my parish church for a long time. Um, and I remember being in the rain with Bill Bratton outside the church. Uh, I remember my first eulogy, and I remember the most difficult part of any of these eulogies was when they had little children. Because I could find a way to explain to the wife and the parents and the family, I could explain why their husband, police officer, or firefighter lost their life. It always, it didn't always, you know, ring true with them, but it usually did. But they were heroes. You know, they were, they, they, they were what uh, the gospel talks about, laying down your life for your friend. No one has greater love than laying down your life for your friend. They live their life that way. I mean, every, every time they leave home, they may not come back. Uh, now, anytime you leave home, you may not come back, but the odds for them is much higher than for you. Uh, and they're walking into inherently dangerous situations. Now, uh, uh, the police officer, the police officer who was involved here, um, he was a kid. I mean, it was, yeah. well, I don't know. Do you have the picture up of him and his beautiful bride? Uh, I think it was only about two years ago. Do you have that picture right there? Look at that. Um, uh, she's without a husband now for the rest of her life. And she has a one-year-old to bring up. Uh, why? Because a guy that's been arrested 22 times was on the street. That's why. This wouldn't happen. Uh, this wouldn't. Ha this wouldn't happen in a uh, rational place. I don't think it'd happen in a place with a Republican governor. The the law that keeps this guy out was signed by Cuomo, and passed by a, a left wing, nutty group of. I don't even. I don't even think they call themselves Democrats. I don't know what the hell they are. I mean, every time you bring it up to them, they got to tighten up the bail laws. They laugh at you. And people are getting killed left and right. 22 times this guy was arrested. And at the same time yesterday, by the way, and Michael Goodwin, who I think is one of the top columnists in the world, has a great uh, column today putting together the murder of this wonderful uh, uh, police officer, Jonathan Diller, and the, the person who was thrown on the subway track. Yeah, yeah. By, by a guy who got arrested... Uh, in October, for assault and about five other things, and was put out without bail. So, I mean, you might as well thank the judge for the murder of the person on the subway, as well as the people who passed the law, because he'll tell you, I had no choice. Now, I think he probably did have a choice when I look at the charges against against this, this guy who, who, who threw who threw the uh, uh, person on the subway tracks. He, I think he did have a choice. And I think uh, th there's no way that when we had a career criminal uh, law in New York, that a guy uh, with 22 arrests and plenty of convictions would be out on the street. The whole idea of the career criminal program, which began with an article by James Q. Wilson in the late 1970s, early 1980s, he did a seminal study of criminals, and he found out that uh, 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 considerably fewer people commit many more crimes 
that you think a lot more people are responsible for. And that if you just actually focused on the ones who were the most dangerous, you'd cut out about 60, 70% of the crime. Well, I happen to cut out 80% of it. Well, I took James Q. Wilson seriously. I used a career criminal as a way of guiding my emphasis on criminals. This guy, I'd have had this guy away, I don't know, first year I was mayor, second year. I mean, he's, he's, he's getting picked up all the time for stuff. The minute I'd see that record, we'd find a, a way to put him in for a long, long time. Also, I was very uh, 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 anxious to get the statistics of crime down because it was hurting New York. These guys are crime machines. So look at it this way. You keep this animal out on the street uh, for two years more than he should, you, you probably got about 500, 400, 500 crimes. So, so he got arrested 22 times. You really think that's the number of crimes he committed? 22? Also, his uh, partner uh, had 14 arrests. Also a career criminal. So I don't know if you know the way this murder happened, but, but, but police officer Diller and his partner uh, saw this car. It was in uh, uh, the far Rockaway section of New York, which is in Queens, not far from Kennedy Airport, for those of you who are outside of New York and you want to kind of orient it. And uh, this car was parked for an inordinate length of time in front of a T-Mobile uh, uh, shop. Now, every shop in New York is a, um, is a uh, thief's delight. I mean, you can take anything out and most of the DAs, I don't know, I think they give you an award. Uh, but if it's just a mo mobile phone, gosh almighty, we're not going to put somebody in jail for a mobile phone. You look at the cop like, why the hell did you arrest him? Uh, but this, uh, 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 these cops were, now I'm not sure that's the reason, because they, they haven't told us exactly the reason why the two cops approached the car. I'm guessing. Uh, it could be, it could be they, 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 they sent in a description or they sent in the, um, uh, the license plate number and they got a response that these guys are wanted for something or they're dangerous. Or, I mean, there is a tremendous amount of information now that's in that police car, in that radio, in, the, in that computer. I mean, you can search criminal records all over the world. So there's a reason they went up because the two of them went up. His partner went on the, went on the uh, driver's side. He went on the, he went on the passenger side. and. Um, and he told he told uh, the guy uh, to get out. He asked him to get out of the car. Instead of getting out of the car, the guy um, rolled up the window. Uh, not sure if he locked the door. I think he may have locked it and unlocked it. But he um, rolled up the window, locked the door, and police officer several times said, "Come out of the car." The guy then, un I think, unlocked the door, began opening the door. So he was much lower than the police officer. This is important. And without any, uh, just in an instant, he took out a gun and shot the police officer. And he shot the police officer below his vest, largely because he was probably coming up, sitting down, and he shot. The police officer very intelligently, Officer Diller, very intelligently and very bravely, immediately reached for the gun, pulled the gun out of the bum's hand, and then I think went down. At that point, his partner gets engaged and he shoots the guy. Uh, now, if that guy had come out with the gun, his partner might have joined him. So we, we have Officer Diller, uh, nobody's exaggerating, dying as a hero don't we? He's, he's shot fatally. And the first thing he thinks about is getting the damn gun out of the guy's hand. Uh, the guy is shot. Uh, unfortunately, it works out this way. They both go to Jamaica hospital. Police officer is pronounced dead and the bum is still alive. Uh, hopefully, you know, I don't know, in New York, who the hell knows what's going to happen to him. I mean, I'd like to say we're going to execute him. That's what should happen to somebody who kills a cop, don't you think? And then they say, oh, put him in jail for life. Meanwhile, in the last four years since Cuomo signed this ridiculous bill, I, I think we have let out of jail about 
28 or 30 cop killers. This, this we put them in jail for life is bull. Black Lives Matter, the advisors to Black Lives Matter are cop killers who were let out by Democratic governors and presidents. That's why I immediately knew that Black Lives Matter was an incendiary, horrible, anti-American communist organization. Just a teeny bit of research would have told you that. <laughs> but the basketball leagues, the corporations, baseball, didn't bother to even look for that. And they gave millions to an association of cop killers. That's one of the main reasons they exist, to kill cops. I mean, you got to be a moron not to figure that out when at every single one of their uh, protests, they say, uh, fry them like bacon. Hmm? Pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. That's like telling all the impressionable idiots around, kill cops. And they do. And now we have one, we have one dead. And we have a family broken up, destroyed. A kid who's going to grow up without a father. Well. So um, let's keep after this and let's see. It is in Queens. Good. Better DA than in, than in, than in uh, Manhattan. So we got a chance here. She's not spending all her time going after Donald Trump like Bragg is. Uh, Donald Trump is the only criminal in Manhattan. Everybody else, I imagine I would be if they could get me spitting on the sidewalk or uh, breathing too much, taking in too much air that I'm not entitled to. Or, but uh, basically, uh, except for Trump, there really is not much priority for crime in New York. Every, everybody is set free by Bragg. Uh, but the DA here, uh, different. So there's a chance, th there's a chance, there's a chance that we'll get some justice here. Uh, I'd like you to look at a picture of the thin blue line. That, that's what separates you from uh, complete chaos. That's what separates America right now from being a third world country. Because crime both the crime we produce ourselves and the amount that Biden has brought in with the over 8 million people who we don't know who they are that have been brought in uh, foster and create every day, most of which is hidden from you because they lie about it. When you consider both, uh, we, we should, instead of making life miserable for these people, we, we should make, we should honor them. This is not the last thing we got left protecting our civilization. I, I, I'm putting up there a um, a place where you can send a uh, donation. This was originally started by George Steinbrenner, and he did it anonymously. He would donate money uh, to uh, police officers who died. And uh, when I found out about it, I wanted to publicize it. He told me, no, no, he didn't want to publish this. And eventually he realized that it would help other people also do donate. And, um, and so we send the money to the Silver Shield Foundation. You can be sure it'll get right to the Dilla family. Also, make sure you put in your $11 a month at Tunnel to Towers, T2T.org, because uh, Frank Siller, if he hasn't done it already, will pay off the mortgage on their home for Tunnels of Towers. And you can't imagine, I know it sounds strange, but you can't imagine, because I've been there so often, how comforting it is for this young woman uh, to know that, the, that she's got a home now for her one-year-old for the rest of her life. And then, then there's plenty of more support, believe me. Uh, one thing about New York, she's, they may not vote, which drives me nuts because these these idiots like Adams and Hochul get a, get get elected with twenty two percent of the people voting. I mean, who who would ever hire Hochul or Adams for anything? Uh, Adams. I mean, the minute you found out that Adams uh, 
talked to God in, in 1993, and God told him to run for mayor. I think he'd get a little nervous about him, right? I was running in 1993, and God didn't talk to me, and I won. I should also point out that my, my friend, Senator Lieberman, died unexpectedly today. I knew Joe very, very well. Considered him um, an honest politician, <laughs> much rarer than I used to think. An honest and an honorable man, and a good man. And even though uh, I didn't agree with this third party thing that he wants to do or wanted to do, I respected his, uh, his, his viewpoint that America maybe needs a change. It's worth hearing that. It's worth seeing what the American people think. We are a democracy. And he, and he didn't do it out of any desire to make money or be important. or He did it because he believed it. Very, very good man. Uh, too bad we lost him. But he made his contribution, I'll tell you that. So we'll take a, sh a short break, and when we come back, we'll, we'll bring you up to date on the, on the bridge. The foundation delivers on its promise to do good and never forget the sacrifices America's greatest heroes have made for us. Heroes who risked their lives to keep our communities and our country safe. Heroes like United States Marine Corps Captain and Pilot John Jeremy Sachs. Captain Sachs sustained fatal injuries when his military aircraft crashed during training, killing him and five other service members. He's remembered by loved ones as courageous, brilliant, and devoted to his career, family, and friends. John is survived by his wife, Amber, who gave birth to their second daughter three months after his death. Tunnels of Towers paid the mortgage on the family home for Amber and their two daughters. The foundation has helped over 1,000 military and first responder families navigate the worst of times by removing the burden of a mortgage payment. Our nation's heroes and their families need your help now more than ever. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. T2T.org. That's T, the number two T.org. T2T.org. Please donate now. We just played. Well, I think you just heard the Tunnel to Towers uh, uh, ad, but it, 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 this is for real. I mean, this is an organization. I was there at the beginning of it. I think I've told you the story. I'm sure I'll tell you again. I was there at the beginning of it, and it started helping the uh, September 11 people, and then it, 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 it expanded to the military who went to war to, to continue to fight against the people who invaded us. And then it moved on to focus on catastrophically wounded warriors who need special homes. And then it began uh, to, to look at the idea of paying off mortgages as a way of giving a certain degree of stability to the families. And now, uh, Frank, who accomplishes what he wants, wants to end uh, veteran homelessness. And he's got 10 facilities already, and he just got started. This is a guy who didn't know a damn thing about building homes. And now he's built a couple hundred smart homes for catastrophically injured warriors. You can't believe what it does for them. And for you, 11 bucks a month, T2T.org. I shot a bunch of commercials for them today. And my voice actually is a little off. I did about eight. And it was just an honor to do it. Um, so the bridge. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the bridge. I think a lot of people have covered this, uh, um, but I am going to raise a few questions about it. Do, do you have the little map there regarding the bridge? So this 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 um, this ship, the Dolly, which is uh, the flag is Singapore. It was being uh, it was being leased by the Maersk Line, and it was remember. When I say ship, I don't mean a ship. I mean like four or five home. This is three football fields. 
Okay. Right? The football field is 300 feet, right? So this is over three fo football fields. So think of three football fields. I don't know, the tonnage, thousands and thousands of tons, cars on it. Look at that turn it's got to make. I, I know New York Harbor really, really well. I think you'd have a tugboat or uh, taking that damn thing out. I think. But what do I know? I'm just a dumb mayor, a Republican. Shouldn't have been mayor at all. All the cities in America now have Republican mayors, except, gee, one that did a magnificent job of reducing crime, Miami. Um, so it makes a turn. And then, uh, as you see, it's going over the Patapsco River. And uh, I would imagine, if you look again at the line there, it's supposed to go through the middle of the bridge. But you see it starts to veer off to the right. That's when, uh, that's when the, the, it lost propulsion. He lost control over the steering. Couldn't have, I don't think he lost complete control. Or he might have regained it at the very end. Because if you watch it closely, you'll see that at the very end, he's trying to avoid the uh, stanch stanchions for the bridge, holding the bridge up. He kind of swerves away from it. So, uh, of course, it was a horrible hit. You could hear it a mile away. But actually, it was a little bit glancing because the entire ship didn't go in. He, he started to move it away at the very end. So look at it closely, and you'll see that. And of course, it brought the bridge right down. So do, do we have a shot of that? Now, I don't know. Are they seeing it? Right now, we're still showing the map. We're going to go to the shot of it here. Okay. So you're basically seeing it approach the bridge. See it approaching the bridge? There it is, approaching the bridge, approaching the bridge, head, head, headed, headed. Now, now it's uh, the propulsion is gone. You see the lights are out. The very end, they go on. He might have gotten the ability. And you see, notice how he's trying to avoid hitting it directly, but he can't. He can't, he makes contact, and there goes the bridge. The last car goes over. Another car goes over. Keep watching. I think we lost the timing of it, Ted. Okay. And there it goes. And then it goes. Look at that. Unbelievable. And here's yeah. the if you slow down, I'll slow down. Okay. Yeah, that was slowed down. So I I, I mean I, I still haven't been able to, to measure the seconds that the last car went over, but if it was a minute, it was a lot, right? So what happened is uh, either the captain or one of the officers on the ship, when they lost control. Uh, which on the diagram would be when they uh, started to swerve. Um, they called the bridge, told the bridge they were out of control. The bridge notified the police. The police notified two police officers. Well, they notified police officers, but two, one on one side and one on the other, independently, stopped the traffic. So now you saw a car go over. Then I do believe that was the last car. Reason that was the last car is not because it was the last car, because there were police officers on both sides stopping them from going over. So for that, we have to uh, uh, praise the ship uh, staff captain. Saved a lot of lives by doing that. Um, when they did it, I, I don't know how aware they would be of that we're going to end up there hit, hitting hitting the stanchion, but. Probably they did. Uh, now, it's too early to tell exactly what happened. There are some people that think it might be terrorism. Right now, I don't have any indication it is, so I'm not going to raise, I'm not going to raise that. Except 
you know, there were 10 possibilities that near the bottom uh, could be. Look, you can't rule out anything. Uh, the chip itself does seem to have had a history of problems. So there's a, that. I mean, it, this ship has had that happen before. I don't know how many ships hit bridges, <laughs> but this one hit a bridge. Um, let's see. About 20, about, about two years ago. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It was uh, long, longer than that. The MV Dally also crashed while leaving the port of Antwerp in 2016. Uh, Chilean authorities in 2023 found it deficient for propulsion. That's what went out, right? And auxiliary machinery. Um, so it's had it's had um, it's had its problems in the past. Its last inspection was in September 2023, and it was found with no deficiencies. The uh, uh, little PD, do we have a little PD's uh, press conference? A little PD is our Secretary of Transportation, who somehow made it here. I mean, this is a shocker. Uh, when we had all the cargo backed up, he was on his uh, paternity break. After a little while, uh, they were able to convince him to come off it. He never did anything about it, actually. Um, the, the problem never got solved. Uh, then when uh, East Palestine happened, uh, it took him days to get there. Actually, I got there the same day he did. And the mayor kept him waiting because he didn't think he had much to offer. He didn't. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Uh, but this one, he showed up right away. I wonder if it's because it's a Democrat city and it's an election year. So little Petey uh, showed up and his, ob ob I mean, it was useless that he showed up because one of his observations was, uh, I mean, there's no reason to put him on, he's a jerk anyway. Uh, one of his observations was uh, that this could happen to any bridge in America. Well, thank you, Secretary of Transportation. Uh, uh, that's because of the con we have container ships, right? Well, you would think that would be the case if we just developed container ships, like in the last couple of years. So nobody took a look at the bridges to see whether or not being uh, struck by a container ship that's going under it all the time might do something to it. You mean 50 years nobody tested this moron? And, and you didn't think of that as the Secretary of Transportation? This, these ships are going under there all the time and at any moment, if it hits a stanchion, the whole damn bridge comes down? Like at nine in the morning with 30 cars up there? What the hell are we paying you for? You know, if you work for me, I'd fire you this morning for saying that stupid thing. I'd say, well, what the hell you been doing there? Going on paternity leave for the entire time? If the bridges in this country cannot withstand container ships bumping into them, there's something wrong, jerk. What about the infrastructure money that Biden, that Biden uh, and Obama have spent? Billions. Anybody think of checking out the bridges? Of course not. It was for human infrastructure. Mm -mm. Payoffs. To make people dependent so you can force them to vote Democrat. That's what you're doing with the money. You're not fixing bridges. You're not fixing tunnels. You're not fixing roads. You've been giving us that bull since uh, Prince Obama. Remember, no shovel-ready jobs? Well, then go get shovels and get them ready. Even a dumb Republican can figure that out. You guys are, you're like criminals. You take the public's money and you don't do a damn thing. If you work for any decent company, they I mean, if you work for a company and you gave that answer, any uh, CEO worth as anything would throw you right the hell out. 50 years of container ships. And there's no bridge in America that could withstand being hit by that damn thing. And we haven't done anything about it. Uh, you haven't been, you, you, you haven't reinforced the bridges. You haven't found a safer way to take the damn thing out of the harbor. I mean, I did, I did suggest tugboats. Hmm? Well, maybe you don't make that turn. Maybe you go straight out. 
I'm sorry, you don't exist to show up after people are dead. You're there to stop it from happening. And you're not very good at showing up when they're dead because if they're Republicans, you don't show up. Uh, uh, hey, ice cream boy in the White House, have you called the family of the police officer yet? Or are we going to do the same thing we did with uh, Lake and Riley? You're going to ignore her for 10 days? And then uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene makes a total ass out of you by giving you a button? And you say, uh, and then she suckers you into responding? because you respond to somebody yelling at you in the audience, and then you get the name wrong, you call Lincoln. When the hell are we gonna get rid of you? I guess November this year, right? Well, we're gonna see what happens with the bridge, but the, the, all, all this tells you is, we have a completely useless Department of Transportation. And the NTSB showed up, and she sounded like, do you know what happened? Oh, she was, she really is on her game. I'll tell you, I have great confidence. And, and still think Pete, any bridge would have come down. Don't blame us. Any bridge would have come down. I don't know if it's two football fields. We'll take a bridge down, Jerko. How about one football field? Where's the line that takes bridges down or don't? Do you know it? Have you ever thought about it? That's what I used to think about when I was mayor. It used to keep me up at night. I didn't go on paternity leaves. We're going to be back with a special guest, and I'm going to take some. Uh, I'm going to take some uh, of my. Because among other things, balance of nature helps me to calm down. Because I'm upset right now. We'll be back very shortly. The new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our My Pillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. And, <laughs> and we no, are back. back. Ted, I'm going to get my uh, balance of nature out of here because I need it. <laughs> That's right. Well, we have with us a very special guest. Yeah with a lot of experience in Hollywood, and, and we're going to pop our camera here. Uh, what, what, it looks like a normal yeah. Mike Smith. And uh, Mike, of course, is one of the uh, top names. I'll let him kind of describe everything he's done. Honestly, I can't even begin to go. I mean, you've done so much. Uh, just You've worked with so many different people, right, as, as a stuntman, uh, one of the best. Um, but more importantly, uh, well, I don't want to say what's more important but you've been directing some uh very important and consequential films Correct. and um so maybe before we uh hear from mike and have a have an interview here we play the trailer to his latest movie oh wow great good hey mike how you doing here so you guys can hear it. it's playing for our viewers but we can't We touched on psychological operations and out of shadows, but we've gone operations deeper. Didn't just go These away. types of operations continue, didn't just go away. Uh, they continue to evolve, evolve in step, in step with, with, technology. with technology. It's the most insidious type of warfare because it's designed to change a person's entire perspective, short term or long term, that's not to be reversed. Most people, Mike, only care about what's 50 feet from their door. Eight seconds. 
three, two, one. Wow. Well, I know what it's, I mean, I, 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 I obviously know what this movie's about. I'm going to have you describe it, but this, this, um, I think the thing that people are going to find really, really surprising about it, it uh, probably a couple of years ago, they'd have been shocked completely. Correct. Now they're going to, what they're going to find surprising about it is that it goes back so far. They're going to accept that it's happening now yeah. because we see the results of it. But I'm going back like three, four, even me. If I saw this like uh, when Trump was first elected Correct. in 2016, I would have been shocked out of my mind. Yeah. Well, looking at it now, I say to myself, oh, my God, it's been going on that long. Well, you, you explain. It. Well, you know, it's it's kind of ironic that t tomorrow's uh, Holy Thursday and then Good Friday. So four years ago, um, we made the first movie, which was called Out of Shadows, mm -hmm. and we put it out on Good Friday. Out of Shadows. Out of Shadows was the first movie. And that movie went viral. It got over 100 million views. Mm -hmm. It got translated to 24 different languages. And what year was that? Uh, that was 20. That was 41020, believe it or not. On, on Good Friday of 41020, we put that movie out. And when we put it out, it went viral. And it got me kicked off of YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, PayPal, and TikTok. <laughs> so, so I good. This is a good man. I, 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 I think it's something right. He just, he just, he just uh, as far as I'm concerned, he just earned the Medal of Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my biggest compliment from one of my biggest enemies the other night. He said uh, the two movies that Mike Smith put out, Out of Shadows and Into the Light, are the two most dangerous movies to ever be put on the internet. And um, and I'm very excited, uh, and I and I thank you for hosting me, Rudy. I've always been well, I've been, well, and, and well, I've been. I think what I think what uh, what you're doing is so important uh, that this psyops and and, and uh, this kind of thing has a long history. Well, what you what, what people have to understand is I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. I don't care how you line up or identify whatever. We've all been lied to. And in order to fix the problem, you have to understand that there is a problem. And we've all been influenced through Always. media. Um, and lately, it's just gone so far. You know, most people want to believe that there's good media and bad media, and we're getting the truth, and someone's going to tell us the truth. But we're so far down the hole now with psychological operations and narrative-driven agendas that people are not they're so bombarded heavily with story and narrative driven content that it's hard for them to get a, a discernment of truth. And these films point out through the media, how the media manipulates you, why they manipulate you and ultimately who's doing it. And once you understand that so important, you're going to be able to make a decision on what you want to do to fight back, or at least to engage, or at least to not listen or listen to different content or not you know yeah. well, you, it's your choice but first you have to understand how you get manipulated and you know i worked in hollywood for 30 years and i worked at every level you know i, I worked my way up to the top and and i see how the narratives are placed in story i see how they're placed in our so you saw a change if you worked in hollywood oh i saw it that change. long i mean i i i love old movies they're so comforting uh and now the movies almost all of them are it almost looks like they want to do something to you <laughs> well think about that i guess they do, do. You remember Moody? like <laughs> no, no, it's kind of funny do you remember rudy and hoosiers rudy was my son's favorite movie right it helped get me elected mayor i'm those are a funny story about it but it helped get me elected mayor yeah well that that, that of course was, i love it those were great rudy, just films, rudy right they were just movies that, that had they weren't anywhere it was just a great story and they were good entertainment and people got to really just go check out and have a great story told to them nowadays there's some agenda in it there's some you know we're, we're pushing this and it's it's to to shape and mold your reality now, based on now rudy now rudy would be a transgender yeah rudy would rudy would rudy be a trans be on hormone blockers and <laughs> a transgender woman trying to get on the notre dame football team yeah well that that could be a possibility but um, I know it's funny actually but no i and i mean look 
it was very frustrating because I could see our republic is in a lot of trouble right now. And I know that there are very few people, there are good people in Hollywood, but very few, just like in politics. There are very few good ones, really. Um, I know that if we don't educate the population or at least open their eyes and let them see how this manipulation takes place, and that these are tools of psychological operations. These are tools that they use in psyops to get a reaction, to get a triggered emotion, to get you separated or polarized so that there's there's a left and a right, or a, there's there's I, no way we can communicate together because we can't, but we really are closer. You know, I remember, I don't remember exactly when it was. It was just like an observation that I had going to the movies. I remember saying, I'm tired of these movies because I remember the old war movies for every soldier that I see, there's something wrong with them. I, I, they, like we have nobody normal in the, they're, they're either uh, alcoholics, uh, they're suffering from PTSD, they're killers, uh, they're uh, sadistic, they're, gee, I, my uncles were all okay. My cousins and everybody I ever met in the military. And what does that do? It makes it frames. It makes you anti-military. It makes you, Think of, Ma you know, it, and subconsciously it, it places a, it places an agenda on you, just like you're saying. It makes you change West Point so. to a woke institution instead of uh, creating honorable fighting men and women. And it's it's in everything. It, this this is so bad. It's in our education. It's in our banking. It's in our business. It's I mean, these agendas are being pushed on purpose to change a culture. It's a color revolution, and that's how they're trying to. You usurp our nation and destroy our republic, and the people need to understand. We have to fight. We have to stand up and fight for our rights. I'm not talking violence. I'm talking voting. So, yeah, I'm that's... talking standing up and being smart and outsmarting these people. Because until you understand how you've been manipulated, why you've been ma manipulated, and who's doing it, you're not going to understand how to fight back. And tomorrow night, I'm very excited. We're premiering. Our, our new movie into the light at mar-a-lago um with america's future uh and general flynn mm -hmm. and i believe that uh i hope uh president trump is in attendance if he is that'd be great if he's not I well if he's not campaigning he'll, he'll 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 be there at least for part of it i um i've seen him at, at several i mean he uses mar-a-lago a lot for movies oh yeah for these for these he's movies that off. shake that shake you up and get you to think a little different there are many of them I mean, this one's an hour and seven minutes. It's short, but it's there's a lot packed in it. And I have some of the best intel people in the world explaining psychological operations and how they work so that the that the population can have a perspective that you wouldn't get because most people, like you said, they have a job and they know their world. But but when you're on the inside of the media and you can see it a different way, it it changes. And what they're doing, what they're trying to accomplish. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and until you understand what they're doing, you're not going to understand how to fight. Not, I've said that, but that's what it is. I know, I know a couple of, about a week or two ago, someone else other than me, so I don't want to sound like Biden to be a plagiarist. I can't remember who said this, said that what has changed is an education. We no longer teach people how to think. We teach them what to think. And uh, to me, education was always developing critical analysis skills. Mm -hmm. Even, even uh, that sounds like a big word for primary education, but even primary education, you're trying to teach someone how to think, how to make rational decisions, how to- To critically think. Yeah. To teach you someone- You want to teach them the joy of reading. They're never going to be able to read every book in, in, a, in, in school, so you, you teach them read go like everyone uh all, all of a sudden black lives matter comes along and they collect a hundred million dollars uh to me the the thing that broke my heart was, was baseball doing it. the yankees donated money to me oh, yeah. i mean i love the yankees probably more than you should yeah. i haven't been to a yankee game since then uh, until uh, last week, I went to a minor league game against the Red Sox. And why did I'm they... finally getting over it because they they honored Black Lives Matter. Right. Now there, I know I I used to take care of the Yankees as the mayor. My cops took care of them. That damn organization wants to kill cops. All you have to do, 
is go online, damn it, and you see it. You see uh, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. What's that? You see, when they hold protests like that, they kill five cops in Dallas, and they cheer for it. You go take a look at the people who work for them. They employ cop killers who were let out by Democrat presidents like uh, perverted Clinton. Uh, and these are guys who are experts in killing cops, teaching them how to kill cops. Uh, then beyond that, uh, the the people running it are not terribly sophisticated about, they tell you we're, we're trained Marxists. Patrice Kalora says, I'm a trained Marxist and I'm proud of it. I want to overthrow your government. And, and the stupid uh, baseball teams and basketball teams and football are giving them money and uh, every corporation in the world. Well, it used to be. And then they stole it. Well, it used to be that sports were sports and there was no political agendas being placed in sports. But now with the change in our culture and the shift that we've gone through in the last 10 years, that's why we're seeing these things. But wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it just jump out at you if you were a critical thinker? That anybody that focuses thing on things on one race is probably a racist. Like black lives matter or white lives matter or brown lives matter. I mean, God didn't make us that way. God made us as human beings. And we were taught, even by Martin Luther King, it isn't about race. It's about the content of your character. There were great black people and terrible black people. There were great white people and terrible white people. Exactly. The minute you start that race thing, wow. And that, and I, but I, I truly believe our nation's stronger, uh, and we're a lot closer together than people really believe. We've been systematically separated and divided because if they can divide us, they can distract us, then they can. We've all been made stupid. Well, that's like right now, any anybody who went to Harvard in the last twenty years should get their money back. I should get the money back for my daughter who went to Harvard. They didn't get an education. They don't even know what they're talking about. I mean, they're running around the streets uh, telling. Uh, 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 Israel uh, to stop the invasion of Gaza and uh, stop the occupation of Gaza. They gave up Gaza 20 years ago. Gaza has been a free terrorist empire for the last 20 years. Israel doesn't control Gaza. They, that's what they want to do. But they don't learn history. Well, they change, they change history. They change it. They, the history books, it's funny, you talk about critical thinking that's a lot of discernment and discernment takes wisdom and you know before you can have revelation you have to have wisdom mm -hmm. and once you have that you, if you go back and look at the, like when when i was in high school or back when you were in high school those books are very different now yeah the history of texas for example like if you go take the texas history book and read the way it was when i was in high school versus what people are reading now it's different yeah, and that's how they change the culture. That's how they change us and move us into a different. And, and it, all, all of it is geared toward how terrible America is. Correct. Uh, both, uh, both uh, uh, then and now. We are under, and then which which doesn't explain the phenomenon of why the hell all these people are coming here. I mean, I mean, you, you would think critical thinking. One kid would raise his hand and say, "If this country has been that bad since Columbus." How come all these people are trying to come in here? What are they crazy? Uh, that, that's what I mean by critical thinking. You got it. You got. You got. Or when you hear Black Lives Matter, go read about it. Don't just let the the, the Marxists on television tell you what it's about. Or go read about it. Find out that Patrice Coors was actually a lesbian uh, activist, uh, gender not even a lesbian activist, a uh, gender destruction activist. I would call it. And uh, she glommed on Black Lives Matter because she could make money with it. And she had no interest in race. She's a communist. And uh, she also read the communist literature in the 30s and 40s saying that race was a better dividing line in America than class. So when you think of critical thinking, critical race theory, Marx's medical critical thinking is about class. It's been translated into race. So geez, it's not that hard to go find this. And realize you're being manipulated by the communists. It, it's a hundred percent a communist. We are we are under we are in war, and the war is for your mind. It's an information war. Yeah. And that's how they're manipulating the population. It's not kinetic yet, but it will be soon. Just like, I mean, if it keeps getting bad, and then you, know, you, you put this many criminals in one area, you, well, you know, you're the mayor. I mean, you can't, and and you're not enforcing the law, the rule of law and order. 
things are bad, things will happen. That's just another. Yeah, I don't. I do not understand. Uh, uh, I mean, there's no way to analyze the situation we're in right now when we got eight million people here, maybe more, maybe more. We don't know who they are. I mean, and the ones that we have information on, it's just so the 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 the, the Chinese under Trump were one of the groups that had to be very critically analyzed before they were let in. You know, when they said he, he wouldn't let any uh, Muslims in, it was never Muslims. It was he wanted people from dangerous countries to be examined more carefully. I, I wrote the paper explaining it. And uh, well, China's not Muslim, <laughs> but China's a dangerous country. So he had a very extensive list of questions. And we had a special task force that put a lot of Chinese people in jail, including professors who are stealing stuff for Biden comes in, he does away with the task force immediately. None of those people go to jail anymore. Then, just this year, he, he took the questions down to 40. This year, he took them down to four. But you come in from China, you ask four questions. I, I'm going to find out you're a terrorist by asking you four questions. Are you a terrorist? Right. No, I am not. Right. I own a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. One from column A, two from column B. Yeah. Wow. Well, we talk about we talk about the the CCP and the infiltration and the uh, influence that it had. There was a a, a Chinese pol police station operating in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. And then they then they say he's racist because he says it's the China virus. That doesn't mean that all Chinese are bad. I mean, we we always name viruses after the place they came from. I mean. Uh, the Italians were in the mafia. It doesn't mean uh, I put them in jail. It doesn't mean all Italians are bad, but I'm not supposed, you know, even back then there was a, there was a rule. When I first used the word mafia, I got a whole bunch of people from the Italian Civil Rights League that attacked me for using it and said I was violating the rules of the Justice Department. I've been the number three person in the Justice Department. And I said, you're crazy. There's no rule in the Justice Department uh, prohibiting me from saying mafia. And then they present me with a rule. There was a rule. John Mitchell, I think maybe the only attorney general went to jail, passed, uh, passed something to satisfy Mario Biaggi. You can't use the word mafia. Now, Mario Biaggi, uh, I also put in jail. <laughs> he was a cop <laughs> who worked for them. And the Italian Civil Rights League was run by Joe Colombo, who headed the Colombo crime family. So to me, it's like I'm what I'm going through now with Biden. I knew all this, and I'm not going to listen to this bullshit. Right. So I said, fire me. Mafia, 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 mafia. What are you going to do to me? Right. I, I'm, I'm going to put him in jail, and I'll prove to you there's a mafia. And we won the commission case. I said, you see, I proved it in court. A jury found that there is such a thing known as the Mafia Commission nationwide that, by the way, ran Las Vegas, ran the Teamsters Union. But they, they just, the Justice Department would lie about it. Right. And why did Mitchell do it? Because they wanted the Italian vote. Nixon wanted the Italian vote. It's not just Democrats. 100%. And they wanted the Teamsters. And the Teamsters got angry at Bobby Kennedy for going after them. Bobby Kennedy should have gone after them. They were a bunch of crooks. Hoffa was completely funded by the mafia, backed up by them. He was able to organize the truckers because if you didn't organize with Hoffa, they broke your legs. Yeah. That's all real. So I mean, you got to crack. We got to crack through that. I mean, it. It. And the first way to fix it is to be aware of it. Yep. The first way you can you can do you you can tell people till they're blue in the face, and you know I get people approaching me all the time. Well, what do I do about it? Well, first thing you got to educate yourself. First thing you got to do is educate yourself on what's going on, so you can critically analyze the information that you're receiving. It takes not being lazy. Well, and that's what it's and, and not having attention deficit disorder and all the things that we, you know. Well, the public is so bombarded constantly. Like back when I was younger, there were, you know, four or five news channels. Now there's 30 and there's hundreds of different um, hundreds of different places where the information is just constantly hitting, hitting you, bombarding you and you become numb to it. So it's hard to determine, you know, it's, you got to be careful who you follow. Get your news sources, you know, from multiple different, you know, locations, and then look, compare it and think critically over it. 
analyze well, it. I want to thank you very, very much for, for, for well, first of all, for the first movie, which in and of itself was a, enough, a great contribution. This is even better. Uh, and um, so tell people how, let's tell people how they can get it, and then we're going to say yeah. good night, and we're going to continue on our confidential. That That's right. And before we go, just talk about this movie, Mike, uh, Into the Light, and kind of, you know, it says here, it's a movie made to bring to surface uh, that psychological operations are present and active in today's society. We only have a few minutes left, but maybe you can uh, give our just audience a little just description. Just how to find it. And then we'll do the rest of it on okay. Confidential. Because I was kicked off of every platform, we have we had to build our own hosting server and our own code. So it's on into the light dot movie. Into the light dot movie. It's you if you go to into the light dot movie, out of shadows is there, it's still free. You can watch it. Into the light dot movie is I made it the price of a cup of coffee. It's $4.99 for a three-day rental. And if you'd like to purchase it, you register your account and you can purchase the movie for $9.99 and you can watch as many times as you want. And I'm gonna tell you the biggest comment I get back is one, I didn't know you made a second movie because it's been so suppressed. And that's why I need help. I need help from the public. I need help from you, Rudy. Thank you for bringing me on. But I need to get this film out because it's so important right now about how you're being manipulated, and groomed through AI. How you know you're? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna give it away, but you're gonna learn how you're being manipulated, why you're being manipulated, and who's doing it. And I cover it with very, very high level. People involved in this movie, General Flynn, Laura Logan, Keith Rose, Brian Gamble, and Boone Cutler. And these are some powerhouses in the Intel world that will really bring to light what you need. So to I just got it up right there, Into the Light documentary, right? Uh, oh, this, this is Vimeo. No, this isn't it. No? That's not yeah. it. Sorry. And we can end on the... So Into the Light dot movie. Yeah, that's mine. So wh which one do I hit on? Sorry. Yeah, can you hear that? Into the Light official movie? Yeah, that's it. That one. But we'll play it on. Oh shit! Yeah, we'll, we'll play it on here so they can see it on the closing. We'll go out on the, yeah. We'll go out on the trailer, Mayor. Okay. Yeah. We'll put the trailer on. But if you put an into the light dot movie, you go to the official website. It's a very nice website, by yeah. the way. Well, what? what everybody, check it out. It's on Vimeo. They, they let me tell you what they're doing. Every time this movie starts to gain traction, I get people ripping it off and uploading it. For free, all over the place. Ah, uh, that's a big that? problem. A second, you mean Vimeo has it on there? No, no, it was. You don't get paid for that. It was Rumble. No, it's a it's bad guys. These are bad guys trying to yeah. What's called instead of it says suppress it, they oversaturate the people that are interested in this type of content. They'll oversaturate them with the film for free. That way, it drives it away from our our side. So that's true, and that's yeah. Bad. But but. Now, aren't they supposed to pay pay you for that? I mean, I mean, well, you would, I, mean I, would take, okay. I mean, like the 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 first movie, I self financed and I gave it away for free. I didn't ask for anything because I was in a position to do that. That's we're not coming. Except, well, but I felt like it was. I should give this to Godfather. I know, <laughs> but but I but I but this movie, I I feel like it's important, and I felt like you know I needed. To, yeah, yeah. I haven't. You know, I get. I walked away from a career most people will never have. Yeah, to do this, and I did it because I want to save this republic. You are, and I want to do my Happy part. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you doing? I I want all of you to get it on the official site because we don't know who the heck's playing around with it. Number one, okay, and I want you to make sure that you uh, uh, take care of uh, Tunnel to Towers. Particularly with what's going on, huh? Let's t let's take care of them. Let's make sure they get their eleven dollars a month. And then there's a lot of other things that you got to do. But I think the advice you just got is absolutely spot on. You got to do your own thinking. You got to do your own work. You got to do your own reading. You got to teach your children to do that. And um, I do have a feeling that there's a critical mass that's now developing that's uh, questioning this. And I feel I feel more hopeful than I have, let's say, than I did uh, six months ago. Um, and I was going to analyze a poll for you. I'll do it tomorrow night. It does show Biden gaining a little. But this is good. I'm going to tell you why it's good. He's gaining a little, but Trump is still winning. 
That's after that's after the media did everything that it could to make his pathetic, disgraceful State of the Union speech, where it even even though the right name of the poor young lady who was killed uh, tried to make it into a great event, because that's because nobody watches it. All you'd have to do is watch for about four minutes, and you'd call up the local uh, nursing home and say, "Please pick this guy up, take him off there, and take him into the nursing home." Most of the people in nursing homes are more articulate than he is, let's face it. So uh, he's still losing in enough states so that Trump would win. I, I always add five, five points to every poll because they cheat completely. And, and finally, it's beginning. Robert Kennedy is beginning to take more votes from him than from Trump. So if you put Robert Kennedy in, Trump wins by 10 points even with all that garbage. So keep it up, all right? Now they're gonna have more coming at us. So we gotta be ready and we gotta stick together. And uh, don't forget tomorrow, wabcradio.com at three and right back here tomorrow night. And we're gonna continue this conversation on Confidential. Just hit subscribe. Thank you. And God bless America. Thank you. table is tilted folks the game is rigged and nobody seems to notice nobody seems to care good honest hard-working people white collar blue collar doesn't matter what color shirt you have on that's what the owners count on the fact that americans will probably remain willfully ignorant because the owners of this country know the truth it's called the american dream because you have to be asleep to believe it it's a big club and you ain't in it you and I are not in the big club. Most people, Mike, only care about what's 50 feet from their door. What people don't understand is we're in the middle of war, and the war is for your conscious mind. We've all been influenced by these types of operations or information warfare. Psychological warfare is the most powerful type of warfare that can be implemented in a battle. It's the most insidious type of warfare because it's designed to change a person's entire perspective, short term or long term, that's not to be reversed. Well, most people, if they want to really dumb it down, they just say PSYOP is marketing. I don't dumb it down that way because few marketing campaigns cause other people to kill other people. It's only PSYOP does that. Hollywood, advertising, music, sports, gaming, social media, all of those things are tools. All those things are tools that they use to message. Now, are they good or bad? That depends on who's behind the message. And that depends on who's driving the narrative. And that battle's been going on since the beginning of time. Don't listen to Mike Flynn. Listen to this guy. Listen to a Dr. Harari, or listen to a Klaus Schwab, or listen to some of these other leaders that are part of this organization. Those are two that are very public, and they're on record with their ideas, their timelines, and their capabilities. It's very real. You don't even have to take my word for this stuff. You can go to uh, NQTEL and look up their articles about artificial intelligence, what they're planning on doing with the artificial intelligence in the space of voting. You can go to OpenAI's website, look at the headline, what they say. They want to steer us in the right direction, okay? Who gets to determine what's good for mankind? Only the truth stands up to questioning. So you should never ever mind being challenged or questioned. So when people say all the time, how do I find the truth? That's how you find it. Challenge it, question it, test it. And what's left standing is the only thing that matters. 
But if you look at the arc of history, the most powerful, the wealthiest, the most connected people in the world, they never in the end are left standing because it's always a small group, a small virtuous group that has unmitigating faith, that stands for truth, that stands for freedom, that will stand up to these folks. I jumped out of the darkness, rose in through the light. I was searching for someone. It's to bring to bear the principle of common sense and rational discussion to the issues of our day. America was created at a time of great turmoil, tremendous disagreements, anger, hatred. It was a book written in 1776 that guided much of the discipline of thinking that brought to us the discovery of our freedoms, of our God-given freedoms. It was Thomas Paine's Common Sense, written in 1776, one of the first American bestsellers in which Thomas Paine explained by rational principles the reason why these small colonies felt the necessity to separate from the Kingdom of Great Britain and the King of England. He explained their inherent desire for liberty, for freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the ability to select the people who govern them. And he explained it in ways that were understandable to all the people, not just the elite because the desire for freedom is universal. The desire for freedom adheres in the human mind and it is part of the human soul. This is exactly the time we should consult our history. Look at what we've done in the past and see if we can't use it to help us now. We understand that our founders created the greatest country in the history of the world, the greatest democracy, the freest country, a country that has taken more people out of poverty than any country ever. All of us are so fortunate to be Americans. But a great deal of the reason for America's constant ability to self-improve is because we're able to reason, we're able to talk, we're able to analyze. We are able to...